there are two parts to that body image. And yes, there's the external part that, that others can see of you. And if you look in the mirror, you can see of yourself. But yes, there's an issue with prostate cancer. That's inside. And understanding what's happening inside can be difficult to conceptualize. Um, and for men to opt for radical prostate surgery means that almost certainly they're going to suffer side effects uh, and almost all will suffer at least some uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, which may be short-lived uh, or it may be permanent. And, and that's something that for some men in particular, um, that's their um, individuality, that's, that's who they are. For the first couple of weeks after my surgery, I really had trouble with that. I had my struggle button going. And it's only in the last few weeks that I've said, well, I've actually had an all clear PET scan saying that um, there's no evidence of other disease there. They've taken out the prostate, everything looks okay. Um, all my other health issues are under control. So if all I've got to do is wear a nappy for the rest of my life, that's a small price for me to pay. I can handle that. But to start with, it was a no-go. I, I really was quite concerned about it until I backed off with my struggle button, thought about what was going on, why was I thinking this way, what can I do about it? And, and then to be proactive about it. And, and again, that is part of the healing process for me moving on rather than being stuck with, oh, I've got erectile dysfunction, I'll never be a man again. In terms of body, I think... Uh, you try to look the best you can and although you can't see the scars um, there is there, it, you know that it's there um, and I guess that was very important to me before I actually had surgery I actually had my breasts photographed <laughs> which sounds weird but I didn't know what was to expect what was going to happen and I'd seen a lot of appalling pictures so I would thought say goodbye to them they're going and I think Anything, any cancer uh, scarring can affect how you feel about yourself as a person um, and can be quite sensitive. It does change your body image. So I like swimming, so I didn't want to see the scar and um, that, that's fine to an extent, but I, can, I, I notice it, but other people might not. So I think as a woman, intimacy is important too. Um, your life and I, I'm conscious of that in that intimate space, um, including moving my arm maybe to not see the scar, even though it's pretty, it's, it's disappearing, which is good. I think everyone's different and I, th I think that's really important to um, note that some people don't mind if you take a part of your body and it might be your arm, leg or your breast, but some people, it's part of you. You've, you've had that since you were, <laughs> you were born. so. It can be quite um, an upsetting and awful experience. I'd agree that some people would think um, by having your breast operated on and removed through a mastectomy would make you feel like you'd lost a part of your body. I probably, I'm pleased I didn't. I lost a bit of it, but I had a bit to spare. <laughs> but yeah, and I think it's very important for surgeons to be aware of that, and that whether you're a male or female, that. You know, like even on your face, things um, can come up. That scarring can be um, be an impressive thing to others, as in people will notice it. Yeah. The body image thing. It was sort of tied up with the cancer diagnosis and how I functioned as a male. I didn't want to be letting myself go. Oh, the subtle difference as far as body change has been around mostly in, well, two things, incontinence and erectile dysfunction. They're the two major body changes. But I guess the incontinence was uh, more of an internal image. But the image was wearing a pad, and if I leaked too much and I had a light coloured pants, I'd have a wet spot. Which for a while, in the first 12, 18 months, I was very aware of. And the body image for me even went into, I've got the pad on and I could smell myself. And even though they've got built-in deodorised stuff, Fiona would say, no, I can't smell anything. So I got a little bit paranoid for a while. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird thing. Um, 
you know, showering twice a day, changed the pad as soon as it felt like I had a leak. It took a while to get over that thing. Um, and I was sweating a lot in the groin as well because of the pad. So it was a, a body image of, can people smell me? Um, the body image was not going to the toilet just in case. So if I have to go in the city, of one before I go maybe, do I really need to go when I get to the station, wait till I get to where I was going maybe, to keep extending that built-in resistance. I guess the body image was wanting to be intimate with wife, but I just can't have an erection when I want it now. So the image of a man being able to get it up when he wants to had changed completely. So there was, you know, taking medications, using the vacuum pump if it was worthwhile, but certainly injecting myself so I can have an erection. So it was a whole image of, as a male slash, being able to be intimate with my partner. Different cancer streams, different treatment options can certainly have different consequences um, and if we call them side effects. But I think part of it is dealing with the, um, first of all, in the um, patient peer support groups, the exchange of information on those is second to none at the moment. And also I get back to dealing with your um, healthcare professional on advice and recommendations if you have a problem with something. So what I found was that I wasn't going to be able to beat this by myself. I didn't know everything. And that to reach out for help was actually a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. Because I had to, in a way, acknowledge that I wasn't in control here, that someone else knew better than me and they could help me. And I had to be willing to listen, I had to be willing to accept, and I had to work hard at making those changes so that I could progress with my uh, journey, my battle, whatever word people use these days, um, uh, my adventure with, with cancer. Well, I do exercises in the morning. It sounds a bit weird, but I do, that's more for the lymphedema so, and for my back. Um, so that starts the day after feeling like a truck's hit you. Um, I guess swimming has been a big part, although with COVID it's been a bit tricky. Uh, yeah, I, I, I try, I mean, I obviously have contact with people and support people, friends, um, and other people who have been through cancer experience. So that's where I say, you know, there's this bit of a cancer club. We, we understand and know a bit that some days are good and some are not so good. But I tend to probably not share as when I'm not feeling great. Cup half full or cup half empty. That is a good way to look at things and always looking at, you know, having, your, you know, doing a SWOT analysis, looking on the positive and the negative for everything. And when you've got more negatives, I think that's when you really need, if you're really struggling each day. But if you can manage it, you know, yourself, certainly try. But I think there are times throughout your journey or your experiences really that you might need more support in that space that roller coaster when you really are down to lift you up um, obviously sometimes a cry crying and watching tally may trigger that something you know you might see other people who are going through cancer experiences and that and that may trigger your thoughts um, it's okay yeah it is okay to be not so okay and there are people out there. You're not alone, yeah. Living's an effort. You've got to turn up and show up and put effort in. And that's how I work on myself. I enjoy swimming. I enjoy walking down the beach and getting in the water. Um, I even got in when it was cold this year, which is a bit of a first for me. So a bit numb and, you know, felt cold, but felt great coming out. So to me, it gives me a bit of perspective on the day and I can get through my work because I'm feeling better in myself and my body image because I'm feeling great and looking great. And I'm going, oh, you're looking pretty good, Whitey. <laughs> I guess part of that body image is <clears throat> accepting that a change has gone on because the body's been impacted by surgery and everything. Okay, I'm not happy with it. What can I do about it? What changes can I make? And make it okay at the same time. So as I'm saying this, I think I need to be telling myself a bit more, it's okay to be like this. <laughs>